Good morning. It's Saturday, October 28th. It's 11.14 a.m. And I am creating some beautiful crazy quilts out of all the materials that I've used in previous quilts, like the pineapple quilt, the log cabin quilt, and just plain 5x5 five five quilts. Yes, you know I love to sew. Besides other projects I do and be Excuse me from the background. I have lots of material that I'm going to start cutting. And I also have a lot of batting because I'm going to finish four quilts that I've had. that are They call them UFOs, but actually they've been in my storage unit for about at least seven, eight years, maybe even longer. But this is what I'm doing. I am utilizing all my scraps to create this beautiful, 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 um, um, this is a crazy quilt. The back is just as pretty. It's beautiful, in fact. So let's get started. So what I have here is the one that I'm working on. Let me get my foot control. Today, I'm not going to use my foot control. And there is a good reason for that. Because lots of times when I'm doing some quilts, especially these small little um, quilts, let me put that away. When I'm doing something this small, it is so much easier for me if I just use the button that's on my sewing machine. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to, oops, I forgot I had all this stuff on. So I need to put some lotion. I always, 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 always um, have lotion on my hands because when you're working with materials and threads and all that, if you have dry skin, that is going to catch on everything. And I've got it all over my, my ring. But this is just a ring that I, I love to purchase my own jewelry. So I purchased this ring on my own over 20 something years ago and I love it so what you'll need for obviously you're gonna need a nice pair of scissors sharp by the way and then you're gonna need some bent scissors so you can get underneath all those um, pieces you're going to need some tweezers and I'm gonna show you this is going to be my stiletto instead of using a stiletto I place my stiletto somewhere, but it's okay. You're going to need your. Let me place this over here because I don't want to scratch up my table. You're going to need your rotary cutter. I have this real small portable one. You might want to get one as well. And then I have a nice small um, rotary ruler as well and I have that on my right hand side. You're going to need a hot iron with some steam preferably so you can press your your material and then you're going to need a little bin to put all these little scraps in. Again you're going to start accumulating more scraps. So I have this diagram simple 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 diagram all it is is something that i got from a book that i have and also i rearranged it so it doesn't look like the book the book was a little different it looked like a little not a hexagon but it looked like a, a pyramid what the, the top cut off and then just half of it so you know what a pyramid looks like it goes like up so cut it in half and then cut it in half and that's another that's the other pattern but i changed that one into this one i also have added and changed the foundation and cut the original one and just added another another piece because i do have longer pieces and this is the i traced this this is the inside is five inches but i actually expanded it to six and it will eventually get cut so 
You can go on Google with the search engine, look for a crazy quilt pattern. They have beautiful ones. Crazy quilts have been out for centuries and this is how women utilize their clothing their children's clothing just even flower sacks and and leftover pieces remnants of people they donated or they bought or whatever and that's how the crazy quilt came into be so my foundation pieces are already um, Utilize. I'm utilizing old pillowcases. You know how when you buy pillows, they're in the white. After a while, I'm all every year I buy new pillows, and I keep the white part. And I and I rinse them and I clean them and I press them and they're starched and everything. And when I need them, there they are. So and then the stuffing, I wash it in my my laundry, heavy duty cleaning, sanitizing. I dry them thoroughly with you know dry dry those little towel dryers and then I place them in a in a box or in a garbage bag and then they accumulate after years after five years or so I have like a huge bag I get those huge bags and then I make stuffed toys and I donate those toys so let's get started and I'm gonna place this on the side and trim out any of the fraying that came along the way and, go, and I'm going to make sure I have plenty of um, water for my iron so it's nice and steam ready and to go right? it's a portable iron it's a very portable iron it has it's wireless but uh, not wireless it's cordless and that made my that is making my life so much easier so the first thing I do is look in my bin and see if I have a piece that I can utilize for the center pieces. Those are too small. So I'm going to find a piece that I have in my scrap. And here's a piece. We start off with, let me number them for you. This is number one. This is number two. Oops, my pin is going out of. There it is. This is number two, this is number three, this is number four, this is number five, and this is number six. And then some of them go from one to five. So we'll start with one, and we're going to cut this at a rectangle. So find a rectangle. I love these because they have these lines and everything already for you. So go ahead and cut that out. Make it a quarter of an inch on each side bigger. Then this is going to go in the bin that I showed you earlier that I have. And that is just the right size. And all my materials come from upcycled clothes, sheets, blankets. Um, play, I go shopping and then I buy material. So here it is. I'm going to lay this down. You're going to first, I, this um, was called the grid glider. I'm using this because it has all these, you notice that it has grid lines, which helps me a lot. So what I'm going to do is first find my grid line here. Then I'm going to turn it around and find the grid line that's a quarter of an inch here the grid line for the top is right here so i'm going to line it up with my sewing machine oh i forgot to add the new thread i forgot i'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> can't do anything if the machine doesn't have any thread on it i wound up my bobbins and then i forgot to change the thread i'm gonna use a contrasting color thread so you can see this and I already tested my mic earlier this morning I did a video and it was about a 20 maybe tops 19 video and then I went to play it and I couldn't hear and I said what did I do and I realized I shut off my mic okay 
to bring up your bobbin thread. Again, let's let's line that up with this this perpendicular grid. Make sure that it matches that. Lower your needle position down, and then under here is the grid line. There's the line right there. I'm matching them up. Oops, I forgot I did a decorative stitch earlier, but that's okay. We're not going to worry about that. Let's just pick up our thread, drop a uh, needle and drop it back down. And there's my perpendicular line going down. If this is this line, okay, drop your needle down. Look at your grid. I'm just going to turn it around and do another line. I already know where my line is at. It's right here. And then trim my thread. Use my knee lifter. Cut my thread. And if I have any thread in the back, cut that thread. Okay. So if you see any long pieces, you can trim them out. I'm going to use my rotary cutter and the mat I showed you and the ruler to cut them. So I might my table over here because I don't have room on my sewing table, on my sew study table. And cut the dog ears. Immediately, you, what you hear is me closing my rotor. Now I'm going to press my material down, turn it over, press the back. Make sure it's pressed and it's spinned all at the same time. Okay, so. And then I also have my trash can. Everything's to my right because um, it's easier for my hands because the material's on the left. Okay, now we're going to go to number two. So we need to find a piece for number two. And I'm not talking about this kind of piece, which we should have around the world, but I'm talking a piece, P-I-E-C-E. -E. But we should have P-E-A-C-E -E around the world. Okay, so here's another piece, a piece of material. And I'm gonna lay it, and these are all cut five by fives. Lay it here to match that grid line. Pick up my knee lifter, quarter of an inch, drop my needle down. And again, I'm not using my control foot. And these are right sides together. Right sides together. Now we're going to fold it over wrong side. So you see the right side facing you. Finger press it, and then I'm going to take it to the iron and I'll sew, sew it. I'm going to press it. This piece, I'm going to get my rotary cutter and my mat and my ruler and cut that. So you'll hear me open it. Take my ruler down, trim it off, and close it up immediately. Place that piece into my screw bin. And now we're going to do piece number three. It looks like a triangle, right? So let's let's find a piece of material. And again, they're five by five. I don't like wasting material. So I'm going to line it up with the grid line. This is a little over the grid line, but that's okay. I'm going to utilize this right here to use it as my grid line. So this is going to be peeking out a little bit. No big deal. Again, I'm, util I'm using my perpendicular line and my line going down. Drop my needle and follow my grid line and trim that out. I am not going to backstitch. I know some of you are saying, isn't she going to backstitch? Okay. 
fingerprints. And the reason why I'm not going to backstitch is because I'm going to use my decorative stitch. So I'm finger pressing that and I'm going to press it again. Keeping my iron nice and hot. I'm going to take the rotary cutter and cut the dog ears and that piece. So you're going to hear me open it up. Turn it up. I always close it before I turn it, my material around. Now I'm going to open it up again. Close it up immediately. Okay, so that piece is nice and cut. So here we have a long piece. So what I like to do, I'm going to make myself a long piece from all the little pieces of material I have. Unless I happen to have a piece of long material. Let's see if this would work. Okay, this is too small. Let's take a look. What do I have here? Could I utilize this one to enlarge it? Let's see. Utilize those pieces. Utilize those pieces. This way you don't waste material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these. I am going to sew these pieces together. Lifter. Let's see if the piece is big enough. It's probably still too small, but anyway, I'm going to keep this piece because I'm going to utilize it. I'm not going to throw it away. This is going to go into my, my bin. So I have another piece here. Let's see if this one's long enough. Yes, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it's long enough. Sometimes you have to turn them around just to see. Oh, goody, goody. Little position now. lifter fold that over look at that it's just right actually I can use this whole piece but I'm not so press 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 behind and then I'm gonna open this up like this because it has to be the way I have it here so I'm going to press that and save that piece to sew with the other piece. And I'm going to trim that with my scissors instead because it can be done that way too. I'm going to add that piece to my storage bin. And now I'm going to trim off those dog ears with my rotary cutter. On the other side, there's dog ears, and I immediately close my my um, rotary cutter because I don't want to hurt myself. Okay, I'm looking in my storage. I mean, in my my bin to see if I have anything that'll fit in this corner, if at all. Okay, see this piece right here. I have something in my bin that may or may not fit that. Let's see that to enlarge it. Let's take a look. Utilize those pieces. Utilize your pieces to create something unique. There, there it is right there. So 
Let me double check. It's going to fit that corner because if it doesn't, we may, Houston, we may have a problem. Scooch that up a little bit. And don't forget when you do your quarter of an inch, that's going to shrink it up. See, that may not work. It may not work. So I'm using my quarter of an inch. So if I was to place this here like this and flip it over, it's not going to fit. Now if I place it this way, it will fit this way. Okay, we know that now. So that goes the same thing with this. So if we place this this way and flip it over, that'll work. So that means we're going to sew this like this. I'm going to utilize these two pieces. There's no if, there's no right nor wrong. Press that piece. Take that back over here. your lift and look at that that looks like you created that well you we did create it but I mean without having to without having to follow any grid line we added that piece without having to have a grid line but it looks like you did so now I'm gonna take this Cut this off with the rotary cutter. Any dog ears? I'm going to press that again. I want it nice and pressed. Flat. Don't stretch your material. Just press it. And look at that. Um, how many steps? 20, 22 minutes and 30. So now, let me get my thread. It kind of shrunk a little bit. There we go. Pull it out. Now I want to do a decorative stitch. Let's find a pretty decorative stitch. Um, your machine might have a beautiful stitch as well. So look to see what you have. And another thing. On the bottom of your machine, did you know you can turn this around? And use I have a different color thread on the bottom and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do I turned my pattern piece um, wrong side facing me or the back of the pattern but I want to show you something and this is when I use my tweezers I'm going to pick up the back to help it along the way. If you have your line here, I have my blue and the color pink that I have in the bottom bobbin. Let's 
see how can I show you look at that that's two different colors it now it looks like a flower so you can do that use a different color in your bobbin I have a lighter color because that's what I wanted let me trim off any of those threads and I'm going to pursue doing that. Otherwise, it would have been just this really bright blue. But knowing that I have two colors in my bobbin, one being a pink in the bottom, like a, like a pearl pink, and then the top blue, which gave it a whole different dimension. And then you have your grid lines to be able to match that with your machine. So let's go and finish this up. Again, I'm using my tweezers instead of putting a stiletto under my, my presser foot because I have literally placed my stiletto here before and I broke a needle and I thought, what else can I use? And my tweezers came into my mind. to the next one and that's right there drop my needle down or lower my needle down One more. Oh no, we did that. Okay, so we did them all. And look at that. Did that come out beautiful or what? Look how gorgeous that looks. I think that looks so beautiful. How that blue. This is what it would look like if I didn't turn the, the pattern upside down or in the back. 
it would have looked just like this. And then I seen a video on YouTube where they were using the bobbin for some other project. They were using different colors for the bobbin for um, just to highlight their top thread. And it looks like I actually have um, what they call a multicolor thread or variegated thread. And that turned out so pretty. And that really, compared to what it looked like before, the pattern looks so like blah. And just adding that, that um, stitch changed everything. So here's the other one I forgot to do. to buy my own jewelry. I bought this ring uh, over, I can't remember how many years ago. I bought it myself. It's actually very, very bright. I don't know if you can see that, but it is a beautiful solitaire ring and I bought my own ring. It's got, I put lotion on, so the lotion is actually I scuffed it. If I if I place it into the um, yeah. jewelry cleaner, it starts brightening. You could see it on the reflection here. How it's already got those beautiful colors, and it's diamond, by the way. And I spend every penny that I have on it, but it's my 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 ring. So that it's just I love to wear jewelry. So now. From what it looked like just blase and just brilliant now just brilliant and then I'm gonna trim out all this I'm gonna get my square um, 5x5 ruler out and then I'm gonna square this out to be 5x5 five five. and I have a lot of them already done on this end and this is going to be a pillow for my two pillows so I can place it on my bed when I, with all my other um, so it looks really pretty it could be a you can even place it on a couch you could make a small little pillow and I, I have to add the binding or what they call um, I've seen a quilt as you go and look at that you can, I'm going to add some binding in the, the middle and just play with all these little different designs I have. I could flip them around any way I want. I've got thread everywhere. I could change that one. I could place uh, this blue one instead to match that one. I could take this one out and, and put the satin one. I should bring my satin materials out. but. Then it's going to have sashing in between those. And I've seen that on, on YouTube, how they do that. And I can flip it around, change everything to match the gray, and put the blue that way, or actually have it going this way to give it a whole different look. So I have the other pieces here. I do have a lot of that grain in there, don't I? I just noticed. Maybe this green would look better. And put this one over here. I want to just change the way it looks. See, there's gray in there. And then you could put that green there. Maybe that blue. Or let's see. Change that up a little bit. Let me just have fun. Do whatever that makes you happy. And whatever, just just have fun. Just the whole point is to have fun. And also utilize all those pieces. Like you see, these are all pieces that I've used in other quilts. But I have so much of that material. 
And that's how you do a crazy quilt. That's how you do a crazy quilt. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're having all having a wonderful time. God bless you for joining me. I really, truly appreciate all the comments. Um, uh, just, it's really enlightening for me when I hear people saying, oh, I love the way your quilt came out, or I just, I'm looking at, I have my camera, and then I have my my huge monitor on the, um, the screen as well, <laughs> and yes, I have pony pigtails on there, because my hair grows really, really fast. I've cut it 10 times this year, and I mean literally about back to the I mean it was tapered all the way up to here all the way back here it was tapered flush back and then it grew out and it got into layers and it just you know what you know what it looks like in layers so I, I let it grow and then when it got to my ear I trimmed it all the way up around here and then I had a short little ball and then I noticed it was still a little bit layered and then I, it grew back to my shoulders. And then once it got to my shoulders, I, I cut it at the neckline and it flipped up. And now my hair literally flips. It's already back down here. And I'm really thankful that I have that, um, that I have my hair grows. And you know, it, it feels good when your hair grows. So I'm gonna let my hair grow again. I used to have it all the way down to my, the back of my knee. I mean, that's how long my hair was. And I, it took me about five or seven years to get it that long. So this year I cut it 10 times, and that's 10 inches in, in one year. So it would have been 10 inches longer. It would have been um, right here by now. So not until next year, in March, April, it'll be more or less here. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to let it grow back. I love when my hair was long, but I, I just, it, you know, I wanted a change. And sometimes you just need a change in your life. And it was a drastic change, <laughs> but I had not cut my hair that short. I mean, literally it was cut to, there was, there was, I, I mean, I could barely pull a quarter of an inch out or one sixteenth of an inch. It was that, it was up to here. I had all this, um, what they use a barber, um, uh, what do they call those electric barber shavers? And it was trimmed all the way up to here. And I only had a little inch of hair. But I really liked it. It was really nice. It was very manageable. I just got up, washed it, fluffed it out. And I, I have very wavy, curly hair. So I didn't need to use a blow iron or anything because my hair gets really, really, really curly. And as you can see, it's already real long. And I'm really thankful for that. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Let's pray for peace in the Middle East. I don't want to cry because it is sad. It is truly sad. And we have to pray for the people that are just praying. That's all I can say. It just gets to me really, really bad. I love you all. God bless.